Now we are going to discuss about chromatography. Chromatography is used to separate the components of ink. We know that ink is having different components. To separate the components of ink, we are using chromatography. Chromatography is based on the process adsorption. It is not absorption, it is adsorption. First we can discuss about adsorption. We are considering a substance. This substance is known as adsorbent and there are some particles. These particles are known as adsorbate. It is a process of accumulation of small particle on the surface of a large substance. Here you can see all the particles are accumulating on the surface of large substance. This process is known as adsorption. It is a surface phenomena. It is happening only, upon, only on the surface. It is the accumulation of particles on the surface of a substance. The working principle of chromatography is adsorption. We can discuss about chromatography now. Chromatography is based on the phenomena adsorption. Here we are taking water in a container and there is a filter paper and it is a drop of ink. There is a drop of ink. Here we are going to place that filter paper inside the water and the water is going to rise up. Right? The water is going to rise through the filter paper. The phenomenon is known as capillary rise. The water will go up. What is going to happen the water, when the water is going up? That time the ink will also go up right? with the water. Here the water is going up and with that water the ink will also go up. If this ink is having the components A, B, C. Just imagine the components of ink are A, B, C. Here we are getting A. Here we are getting B. Here we are getting C. Now we got the components of mixture separately because of the rise in water. What is the reason for this separation? The components are A, B and C, right? A is having less, adso less adsorbing power and C is having more adsorbing power. A will adsorb at last, that's why it is going up. But C is having more adsorbing power, it will accumulate on the surface of filter paper as soon as possible. So it will separate at the bottom and A will go up and it will accumulate at the top. It is a working of chromatography. Now we can discuss the application of chromatography. We can explain the process again. The water is going up and we are getting different layers of components. According to their adsorption power, it will get separated. In this process, the components of mixture are get separated based upon adsorbing power. Applications To separate colors in a dye, to separate pigments from natural colors, to separate drugs from blood. How can we separate mixture of two miscible liquids? What do you mean by miscible liquids? Miscible liquids mean they will mix together like water and milk, they will mix together. For this separation, we are using the method of distillation because both are liquid. It is the arrangement of distillation. There is a thermometer here, it is a thermometer. And here we are taking the mixture of solution. Here we are taking mixture of water and acetone. Mixture of acetone and water. And it is water outlet and it is cold water in through this opening we are passing cold water and the cold water will come out from this outlet this arrangement is known as condenser it's a condenser and when we are heating this mixture what is going to happen when we are heating this mixture acetone is having less boiling point compared to water then what is going to happen here the acetone will convert into vapor first when acetone is reaching at its boiling point, it will convert into vapor and that vapor will transmit through this condenser. The condenser will condense that vapor into liquid again. Now it is vapor, the gaseous form of acetone. Because of the working of condenser, it will come as liquid. Here we will get acetone. It is the process of distillation. Distillation. It is used for the separation of components of mixture containing two miscible liquids that boil without decomposition. It should boil without decomposition because when we are boiling it, 
the acetone should be convert into acetone gas it should not convert the components of acetone like carbon hydrogen oxygen and have sufficient differences in their boiling point there should be a difference between the boiling point of the components of mixture here the boiling point of water and acetone is having good difference so we can use this process next one is fractional distillation it is advanced form of distillation here if the mixture is consists of more than two liquid and the, there is a small difference of boiling point then we can use fractional distillation it is arrangement of fractional distillation there is a thermometer to measure the temperature and it is a mixture of liquid water outlet and cold water in it is known as condenser and here it, it is fractionating column when we are heating this mixture the each component will come out as vapor through the condenser we can separate it when we are heating this mixture the components of mixture will convert into gaseous form and it will pass through this condenser and this condenser will convert that gases to liquid back we can separate each liquid from the mixture using this method to separate a mixture of two or more miscible liquids for which the difference in boiling point is less than 25 kelvin it is very important point if the temperature difference is less than 25 kelvin we can use fractional distillation to separate a mixture of two or more miscible liquids for which the difference in boiling point is less than 25 kelvin fractional distillation process is used how can we obtain different gases from air the method is very simple we are taking the gas and we are decreasing the temperature and increasing the pressure we are taking air and we are compress and cool by increasing pressure and decreasing temperature we need to increase the pressure and we need to decrease the temperature then we will get liquid air allow to warm up slowly in fractional distillation column we are taking the fractional distillation column and we are allowing it to warm up slowly gases get separated at different height according to their boiling point gases get separated at different height the boiling point of oxygen is minus 183 degree celsius boiling point of argon is minus 186 degree celsius boiling point of nitrogen is minus 196 degree celsius which is having highest boiling point highest boiling point is minus 183 degree celsius it is not minus 196 because negative numbers so minus 183 is the biggest number here the highest boiling point is minus 183 degree celsius now we are going to answer for some questions we are going to give answers for some question arrange the gases present in air increasing order of their boiling point we need to write the gases in the increasing order of boiling point means the lowest boiling point should be at the first which gas is having lowest boiling point oxygen or nitrogen nitrogen is having lowest boiling point right which is the lowest number so nitrogen will be first then argon then oxygen which gas forms the liquid first as the air is cooled when we are cooling the air which gas is going to convert into liquid first just imagine uh, now the temperature is 27 degree celsius 26 25 24 we are decreasing the temperature 0 minus 1 minus 2 which temperature is going to reach first the temperature is here it is minus 183 then minus 184 minus 185 then minus 186 then only minus 18 196 will come right first temperature will be this one so which gas is going to convert into liquid first it will be oxygen now we are going to discuss about recrystallization recrystallization is very important method because some substances some substances are there on heating they will decompose some substances they will burn so in this cases we cannot use this evaporation method for that we are using recrystallization some solids decompose or burn on heating to dryness some impurities may be remain dissolved in the solution even after filtration if you are using filtration 
some of the impurities are having small size it will pass through the filter paper and it will contaminate the the solid after evaporation also it will remains with the solid and it will contaminate the solid for the, this kind of solid we cannot use this method evaporation we, is not applicable evaporation is not applicable for that we are using recrystallization crystallization is a process that separate a pure solid in the form of its crystals from a solution we are separating the solid in the form of crystal it is known as crystallization now we are going to discuss about purification of water we are drinking water right water is a essential factor in our life how we are purifying the water that we are going to discuss here first we are storing the water in a reservoir it is water storing tank we are storing water in this tank it is known as reservoir from that reservoir we are arranging we are passing that water we are transmitting water to a sedimentation tank in this sedimentation tank sedimentation tank it is to allow the solids to settle all the solid particle will settle down in this tank next one is loading tank in loading tank also the same process is happening the suspended impurities will settle down in loading tank after that we need to filter it right here we are using a big tank which is having fine sand gravel coarse gravel it is known as filtration tank here we are filtering the water after that to kill the germs to kill the bacteria we are using chlorine chlorination tank in this chlorination tank we are killing bacteria using chlorine after that it is reaching to your home these are the different steps of purification of water now we can discuss about changes there are two types of changes physical and chemical change physical changes are irreversible physical changes are reversible there is no formation of new substance like melting of ice if the ice is melting we can convert that water into ice back right we can convert ice to water we can convert water to ice it is a physical change but in the case of burning if you are burning a piece of wood we cannot convert that ash into wood back right we cannot convert it is a chemical change no new substance is forming in physical change in chemical change there is a formation of new substance it is reversible physical change is reversible and chemical change is irreversible example melting of ice and example for chemical change cooking of food now we can discuss about matter there are two types of matter pure matter and mixture pure matter pure matter is again classified into two element and compound can you give some example for element oxygen nitrogen copper argon these are element purest form it cannot be broken down to simpler substances we cannot break it oxygen we cannot break it so these are element example copper and oxygen compound compound means it is a combination of elements like water water is a combination of hydrogen and oxygen right have fixed composition can be broken down into elements by chemical reaction it is having fixed composition and we can break it using chemical reaction example water and methane now we can discuss about mixture there are two types of mixture homogeneous mixture and heterogeneous mixture what is homogeneous in homogeneous the uniform the concentration is uniform everywhere for example sugar solution when we are adding sugar into water we will get sugar solution and the concentration of sugar is same everywhere in the solution uniform composition example sugar in water heterogeneous heterogeneous mixture means the concentration will be different in different region non uniform composition example sand and salt subscribe our channel for getting instant notification of sample paper solution and support us for providing free online classes to everyone www.winpointonlineclasses.com